Welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. I'm Yetta Decker, and today I have an extra special guest. Well, I should say all my guests are extra special. However, this one has a very unique and awesome connection to the Decker team and to me specifically. So welcome, Joe. I'm so grateful Good morning, that Yetta. you thank have you. agreed to come. Thank you very much, Yetta. You're welcome, and thank you. And so it is actually amazingly good to have you here this morning. And I know that it is something that um, means the world to you, or you wouldn't be on this show, what we're going to talk about today. Is that That's kind of right. right? Roar has been a, a wonderful experience for me, and if it wasn't for Roar, you're right, I would not be here. <laughs> All right, so you're going to hear about Roar today, and I bet as you're listening, you're already wondering why Roar on a real estate show, on a show all about real estate. Well, it's because my clients and the interactions I've had with people over the last, I guess almost 27 years now, through being a realtor and in the real estate industry, have demonstrated a lot of things to me. And one of the things is that all people really want to, well, most anyway, want to step into the fullness of all they're here for. And actually, everybody deserves to be able to do that. And that's what Roar is about. So the Decker team has taken on Roar as its initiative, as it's outside of real estate and yet connected to real estate and because of real estate initiative. So Roar Canada launched last year. And Joe was, and I call her Miss Joe or Joe, she actually is Jocelyn Moreau. And uh, my, yeah, she... Her endearing name to me is Miss Jo. So you're probably going to hear a combination of all three today. And I'm actually still talking about the same person. So you'll get used to it as we carry on. And so Miss Jo, I invited her to join me on the Roar journey just over a year ago when this whole idea and concept was thought to be brought to the nation's capital. And it is the first city in Canada that it's been launched. And the hope and the prayer and the desire is that it's going to be launched, in fact, throughout Canada. And then I suspect not Roar Canada, except Roar International, will go all over the world. And so when I first called you to say, would you come on board? Would you come to the first meeting? What did you think and how did you feel? Well, that was last year in July yeah. and I barely knew you. I'd only met you a couple of times, yeah. and uh, you called me, told me what your plan was for to bring Roar to uh, to Canada, to Ottawa, and I had no idea why you were calling me, how I would fit in. This was all about professional women uh, bringing their experiences, their knowledge, and so on to help other women. I was a stay-at-home mom, a, a painter, but something inside me said, I have to do this, I have to go, and I did. And uh, so I went to the first meeting. It was uh, very intimidating. There were, I think, if I recall, there were about 14 women sitting around yeah, the table, yeah, yeah. and we weren't all professional women. I think all the women were leaders in their own right, whether in their homes, and you probably felt like they were all professionals because many of them, in fact, do work outside the home, and others run home-based businesses. Others simply run their families. They're all women, though, that I would say have significant influence in the lives of others. Is that fair? Yes, that's right. But what, what was so intimidating for me was that they were all women who were so sure of themselves. They knew who they were. They knew what they wanted. They knew what they wanted to accomplish, what their dreams were, what their future was going to be. And, and that, that was... Um, so intimidating for me because it's a concept that, that I have, I've never known. And so I think that day I said to everybody, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce ourselves. And then after that, we're going to say, why are we here? That's right. Why are we, That's what are right. we bringing to the table? And yeah. if I can recall, when it was your turn, you just, you and I sat across the table from each other. There were 14 of us around a big oval table. And you said, <clears throat> no, no, not now. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to push her. And so I let it go, and then about 10, 15 minutes later, as the introductions were continuing, you looked at me and you said, well, I was the only one who had spoken, so it had to be my turn. And uh, 
I just looked around the table and I got a little weepy and um uh, and I said I'm the woman you're all talking about. The woman in who needs um who needs help, who needs guidance. And uh um made me wonder even more why I was there. And then but, the really cool thing is you kept coming back. I I kept coming back, yes. I but every week I would say to my husband, I can't do this, I can't do this. And he said, "Well, you don't have to do this, but then something there was something drawing me. Something was just pushing me in that direction that I had to go." And I kept telling myself, "I'm not going to quit this. I'm not going to quit this. I'm going to keep going." And I kept going. Every week I kept going. And in one of those first early weeks, if I can recall, one of the other women around the table who was actually the first person to join me on the journey when I first thought of Roar and heard about Roar and was introduced to the concept of Roar from Diana Kokoska in Austin actually. Um she looked at you in one of those very early meetings and said, "You're an artist, eh, Jo?" That's right. That's and right. she said, "Well, she might have called you Justlyn. She might have been a little more formal because she is." Yeah. And she said, "So you're an artist. Why don't you paint what Roar means to you?" That's right. That was Leah. She asked me to do a painting of what Roar meant to me and and she said, "But not too abstract." <laughs> and uh and I thought That's right. I thought, "Well, okay, I'm I'm a painter. I can do a painting." But then no one at the table even knew how I painted, if I could paint, if I was, you know, a good artist or not. None and, of us had seen your artwork. That's right. That's right. And uh, I had well, yeah, I had a glimpse. I had seen one or two pieces, I think, at that point in your house, and I didn't know what she was asking you either, really, and mm-hmm. whether it would line up. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah, but when she asked me to do that, it uh, it it was easy because I mean, the mascot for Roar was the roaring little lion cub, and of course, the the lion cub then it takes you. T- took me to the jungle, and then from the jungle t- took me to uh, to Rousseau, the uh, French painter who painted jungle scenes without ever have been there. So uh, that night I went home, and I immediately started sketching and and uh, came up with with what I was going to paint. And uh, I did the painting and was quite quite proud of it. It's become really the icon for Roar. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. The woman soaring in the background. um has become the the icon for war yes which it is has. really cool yes. and what we haven't shared with anybody that's listening or watching is that at that point you hadn't actually painted in about 10 years no i hadn't and no one at the table knew that no no um no i used to uh i used to do a lot of art shows ottawa the major shows in ottawa and montreal and toronto um but i hadn't painted in in 10 years um i've had at that time um my life kind of imploded um i've i've had a very very difficult background then and at that time i had to um seek therapy and uh i i just i just couldn't paint i mean i i I tried. I have a lot of canvases in my studio that are are not finished and and but I but I could not paint as a um and and show my work. So I was very very proud that I was able to to do the roar painting and 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 finish it and be and be pleased with it. And if I can recall also the big distinction between the roar painting and your previous works when you were painting is an element of color light. and light absolutely the painting is so so colorful whereas all of my paintings before and and people would comment on that how dark dark they were but i always felt that there was always light coming in some from somewhere in the little tiny bit yeah a little teeny bit of light and maybe that little teeny bit of light was just just me in my paintings just trying to find that little bit of light in my own in my own life that it wasn't complete complete darkness 
but there is there was that that little little bit of of light that I could hang on to 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 uh, you know get me through another day because basically my life was just one day at a time and and just putting in time and getting up in the morning and and gee I got to do this again I got to go through another day can I go to bed yet so that I don't have to think so I don't have to hurt anymore it 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 was um, a, a a terrible existence and as I said I I did psychotherapy for for two years, which helped me a lot. Uh, it it made me understand why I made the choices I did in my in my life. It made me understand it on a technical level, but it did not help me in surpassing that in in eliminating all that that hurt in my life. And then came Roar. And, and now in that roar. painting, that, that I just it's behind us. If you're watching, and if you aren't watching, you want to be watching. In the just behind Joe's shoulder is her painting. Oh. It's over right over there. <laughs> and so it is there for inspiration for us all the time. That's actually where it's place of honor in the office. And it had it's light and bright and exuberant and the woman is soaring and there is isn't maybe a tiny element of dark because there is a little serpent in the one little corner and that's it so it's complete reversal in how you're approaching life so now roar is not necessarily going to create a transformation this deep and this intense for everybody that attends and for you you gave your all to roar and to the women around the table, and they became catalysts for you, inspiration for you, encouragement, and a place for a sounding board sometimes. And it's not that we did therapy. It wasn't like that at all. It was more just being in an environment of women that were there serving and giving. You started doing exactly the same thing. Well, it's the women of Roar, it was the first time for me to, to be part of a group. I, I've never been part of a group like that. I, I would shy away from those things. I'm, I'm, I'm okay one-on-one, -on -one, but as far as being part of a group, I'm, I'm, I'm not. And, but, but all these women, the whole concept of Roar, I just, I, I felt safe. I, I felt it was a safe place, and I, I belonged there, and I was accepted there for who I was. And so it, it was a very, very self safe place. And then I slowly more and more was able to, to open up, uh, to accept more um, responsibility, so to speak, to, to help in Roar and to feel like, like I had more to, to offer. And, um, about the painting, I would, I, when I was sketching, I was also writing at the same time, and I ended up writing a poem. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm not a poet, but the word, the words were were very healing for me because it was all about um, talk, talking and, and saying what I had to say, and that I was always told from a young age that not to speak, not to speak, and, and you can't say this or you can't say that. And, and now I can, and now I need to say what I need to say. And I've, I've been a victim of sexual abuse from a young, young age, and I have made terrible choices in my life because of it, and I understand why. And now I'm no longer ashamed to say that, and I'm just asking, and I'm begging for any woman out there like me not to be ashamed and not to wait to, to come out and seek help wherever you can. Maybe Roar can help you, guide you where you need to go. I'm 58 years old, 
And finally, finally at 58 years old, I can dream of a future of hopes and dreams. They may be small, but they're my dreams, and I want to live them. So please, if you've had experiences like me, don't wait. Don't be ashamed. You can get past this. Wow, thank you, Joe. That You're is welcome. an amazing story thank and you. your life. If you're just joining us now on the Inside Track on Real Estate, I've been talking with Miss Jo Jocelyn Moreau, and we've been talking about ROAR. You will definitely, if you're just catching us now, you'll want to go back to the first half and understand why the Decker team has taken on this initiative of ROAR, and also to catch Joe's story, what it can do for someone. Ultimately, ROAR is only going to do for you what you allow it to do for you. The mission statement is IGNITE cultivate, transform. So the idea is that you can step in wherever you are. We have successful, influential women around the table. We meet on a regular basis and basically we're champions for each other. So what we've been doing over the last uh, 15 months is creating an atmosphere wherein we can champion encourage, support, and mentor each other, really just celebrating each other's successes. And so Joe's had some amazing successes with her artwork and with her life in general. The artwork and the poetry has really been an expression of the work that's been done inside of her through this movement. That's right. Yeah. Right? Like, Absolutely. how cool is that? <laughs> well, it's life-changing for me. Absolutely. Absolutely life-changing for me. And it's wonderful. My friends see it. My friends see it in me. Wow, this is amazing. And this because of Roar. It's, they're, they're so happy. My friends, the very few that really, really know me, are so, so thankful to, to Yetta, to Roar. And uh, needless to say, so am I. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And now Roar is a whole bunch of different things. So I'm going to get on to the technical side a little bit and then let go Jo just gain her composure. She'll come back and tell you why you want to attend Roar this year. So 2014 last year, October 22nd, was a pivotal day, a day where we actually had that fatal <coughs> horrible shooting downtown. And even on that day, Roar in the evening had a sold out crowd. That's which right, yeah. was a shock to me. So what we were doing last year in 2014 was exploring, is there in the city of Ottawa, in the nation's capital, is there a desire for a movement that is around championing each other? Uh, men, women, and children. We're really a bunch of women creating the atmosphere where we can do this for each other, and yet it is about all people for all people. So in the evening, we sold out last year, and we had a mix of men, women, and teenagers, and we're going to do exactly the same thing this year. There is still tickets available for information on the symposium, which is the evening. You want to go to CanadaRoar.com. And the movement is called Roar Canada. So just don't get too confused about that. You'll want to go to CanadaRoar.com. When you click through to purchase tickets, it takes you to a spot for only $25. You can attend an amazing <coughs> evening where we have a keynote speaker flying in from Austin who originated the concept of Roar as a conference, Diana Kokoska. And she will be sharing some insights of how to conquer with belief and assurance. So this year's theme is conquering with belief and assurance. Last year was change your thinking, change your world, which I think proved <laughs> successful and true. Yes. <laughs> which is fantastic. And we also had the opportunity last year to have three amazing women be interviewed. And that really just solidified the message of change your thinking, change your world. And again, this year we're going to stick with a winning formula. And so we have three extraordinary women. So if you're somebody that's been watching CJOH for years, you will know the name Kimothy Walker. And she will be our um, guest and will be interviewed by Diana and will also share her story. She was a journalist, as most of you know, for 25 years and then launched into her own business only just over a year ago. So you want to hear how she's done that and how she has conquered with belief and assurance. And then we have another extraordinary 
young lady who is only really a teenager herself, and she is a champion for youth mental health. So Kelsey Bowes will be joining us <clears throat> and having a, a chat or a conversation with you and with Diana about how specifically she is conquering life with belief and assurance in the area of mental health with teenagers. And I think many of our viewers know that I myself have had struggle in that area. And my brother uh, was just the anniversary the other day of his by suicide death and my uncle as well. So it is something that's very near and dear to my heart is how do we help people want to live versus just not need, not knowing because I firmly believe he did not want to die um, and he didn't know how to live. And so we'll be talking about how to even conquer that extraordinary difficult um, time or season or way of thinking in someone's life. And then we have another extraordinary woman, Laura Booker, who is an international speaker and author and conference facilitator owns her own company locally here just outside Ottawa and has won awards all over the place for her ability to present messages that are life-changing and transformational. And so you'll want to come and hear her story and how she has navigated life and conquered with belief and assurance. And then, of course, I'll get to share a little bit of story because that's what I get to do. So if you want to hear what I have to say, you'll want to join us that evening as well. There'll be a time of connecting with other women and men and teenagers at the beginning of the evening because it starts at 6 and it wraps up around 9. The, something we've done this year that we did not last year is we will have a time of question and answer, which will give you the opportunity of speaking to one of the uh, interviewees and or Diana and just hearing the answer to your specific and personal questions, which I think will be an extraordinary addition. And then we have a surprise at the end. Uh, I don't want to tell you about it, but I kind of want to tell you about it. So you're actually going to have to come and just find out what the surprise is, which is going to be last year the surprise was the revealing of Joe's artwork, and it was given as a gift to That's Diana, right. yeah. and that was over-the-top exciting. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I've gotten so many thank you, thank you notes and emails and texts and, and mail uh, cards in the mailbox from from Diana, and she proud, proudly displays it in her office at, in uh, Austin, Texas. Yeah, so it's it's great. It's absolutely wonderful. I was I was very nervous, um, you know, whether she would like it. It's such a personal thing to uh, do a piece of art, to do a painting, and to give it to someone else and. Uh, but, but she was thrilled with it. Oh, we yeah. all are. Yeah. It's become the icon. Yes, Who's kidding who? <laughs> and then we have in the afternoon something that is geared for <clears throat> the influential women in your world that you know, leaders, whether in the professional realm, the business realm, or the home realm. And we're going to do what we believe will be the largest collaboration of um, female leaders in our city, 150 people to mastermind together. Uh, that is from 2 to 4 on the same day, September 25th. And it is simply an opportunity to share the best of the best practices you have and also to hear the best of the best practices from the other women in the room. In a roundtable format, Diana will facilitate it, do a small teaching at the beginning. It will be an entirely different program than the evening. So it's not that you're going to choose which one. If you are out there wanting to make a difference in other people's lives and stepping in and leading and influencing, you want to be at the afternoon mastermind from 2 to 4. And you would purchase those tickets by simply clicking through the website for CanadaRoar.com and there will be two options right there to purchase tickets. I have a third absolutely extraordinary conference also happening that same day with Diana, and it is geared to professionals, primarily in the real estate industry. So you, if you are a realtor anywhere in the Ottawa, Montreal, Kingston, Toronto, we're having people drive in from those places, and we have a few folks actually flying in from all over the states to attend the morning mastermind session. And it is going to be Diana sharing how to help 100 clients successfully year in and year out of that's your dream. And then also just how to help buyers understand the urgency in this very interesting Ottawa market. 
And so if you'd like to be part of, and it'll be a mastermind. So again, best of best practices with some teaching from Diana. And Diana heads up Keller Williams International Training and the uh, Coaching Division. And in fact, last year, Keller Williams International was named the number one training company in the world across all categories. 125,000 realtors that it now supports. And so she is sort of the head. Well, she isn't sort of. She is the head of all of that. So she's going to bring her insights and her best of best practices. So for absolutely all the information on these things, you can like my Decker Team webpage. The information is all there with the appropriate links to go through to the proper registrations. You can also go to CanadaRoar.com or you can go to the Facebook page for Roar Canada and like it and you will find the links there except for the morning session. That one you're going to have to come to the Decker team or to get a Decker. So you want to go on my Facebook, Y-E-T-T-A with a hyphen J-E-T-T-E, um, both my names, the phonetic and the legal, and Decker is the last name, D-E-K-K-E-R. Become my friend on Facebook and then like those other two pages. And then you've got all the information. I've been posting and making sure the information is available for you there. So hope to see you at Roar. If you have questions specifically, info at DeckerTeam.com is always the place. You'll want to share this video, let others know about it, invite. If you buy a group of 10 or more tables, this may almost be sold out, however, this part of it. If you buy a block of 10 or more tickets, you do get preferential seating Well, we have availability. And thank you um, for just hearing Joe's story, for hearing what's been going on in her world, and um, how Roar is making a difference in our nation's capital and beyond. It's a better world for me since Roar. That's incredible. And of course, I always have to talk about shows, so I'm going to quickly say two amazing properties are on Orient Park in, in Blackburn Hamlet. I almost said Orleans. You could see that. Um, one at $200,000 at condominium, a three-bedroom garage, great property. And then a row home just down the street from the other property at $290,000. So if you're interested in any kind of real estate, if you have a property that you're having a hard time selling that's been on the market for a while and it's time for it to be renewed, then give us a call. And the Decker team has been specializing in getting those hard to sell properties in this shifting market sold. It's been become our specialty. Who knew? <laughs> and so uh, thank you for joining us on Roar. Now, do you, what last parting words do you have for everybody, Jocelyn? Why attend Roar this year? Oh, my. Um, it's, uh, it's made such a positive change in my life. So all I can say, um, it, I, I don't know where I'd be if, today if it wasn't for Roar. And uh, I'm sure that if you join us, and I hope you will, that you will connect there with, with someone, with some of the women. Surely you will connect. You'll relate to some of the stories, maybe mine. Um, I, I, I do hope you, you join us on the 25th. September 25th. We've got something from 9 to 11.30, 2 to 4, and 6 to 9. We'll talk to you soon.